CQ, CQ, CQ. This is Kilo 5 Charlie Lima Mike, and you are listening to the Everything Ham Radio Podcast. Hey everybody, and welcome back to the Everything Ham Radio Podcast. My name is Curtis, K5CLM, and I am your host for this podcast. Today we're going to be talking about the National Traffic System, or the NTS for short. But before we do that, I wanted to say thank you to all of y'all that are listening to this podcast and all the podcasts before, and reading my blog. I, I was going to do this as a uh, as a regular post on my blog, uh, first of the month or so, but time got away from me, like I said in the last uh, episode, and I didn't get to it. So I thought I would just do it on this episode of the podcast. I really want to thank all of y'all from the bottom of my heart for helping me make this podcast a success and my blog a success. I started this blog back in June of 2014, I believe. And even though I was putting out, uh, you know, content at least once or twice a week, I was really having a hard time growing. You know, I, I didn't have a whole lot of people that were on my news, my uh, email list. I didn't really have a lot of readers. I had a little bit, and yeah, you could say I was just starting out, so it's, it, that's going to be normal. But I was having a really hard time growing it. Well, since the launch of this podcast, I've no- noticed a significant growth uh, to my readers, to my uh, to my blog, and especially to the podcast here. It's it's absolutely phenomenal, and I thank each and every one of you for it. And just kind of to give you an idea what I'm talking about, uh, before the launch of my podcast in January of this year, I was averaging about. Oh, about 900 views a month. Um, you know, it was like 150 views a week, maybe, if I was lucky. And since the launch of this podcast, uh, middle of January, my views for my website, for my blog, have basically doubled. And I'm averaging about 16 to 1800 views a month which is just absolutely awesome and again I thank you um, on top of that my email list that I have that I send out whenever I post a new po- uh, new podcast or a new blog post has better than doubled I would average maybe one subscriber every week maybe one every other week something like that and up until the launch of this podcast, middle of January, I had like 19 people that were subscribed to my website after a year and a half of doing my blog. Well, since the launch of my podcast, and we're talking about, what, 13 episodes, so I've been doing this now for 11 weeks, I've gone from 19 uh, subscribers to 48 subscribers. That's, no, 40... Yeah, something like that. 46, 48, something like that. I've, either way, I've grown 26 uh, subscribers since the launch of this podcast. And 16 of those were last month alone in, in March. So thank y'all all that have subscribed. If you haven't subscribed and you would like to, it's super easy. Uh, you can go to the show notes for this episode, which can be found at everythinghamradio.com forward slash podcast forward slash 13 scroll all the way to the bottom there's a a couple boxes down there that you'll need to fill out or you can just go directly to the uh, subscription page at everything hamradio.com forward slash subscribe either way just as easy Uh, you can even even do it on my uh, facebook page so whichever way is easiest for you that's how you do it Uh, but anyways subscribe to my uh, email list i send out uh, um notifications on new posts or uh, new podcast episodes the other thing that i want to talk to you all about real quickly now uh, before we get on to the topic of the day is uh, y'all listeners i mean y'all are absolutely awesome i mean i have i have seen astronomical growth 
um, in listeners of this podcast. And I want to thank you very much uh, for listening, for sharing, for uh, uh, letting your friends know about this. My first month of this podcast, uh, basically episodes uh, zero through three, I want to say, um, in January I had 345 downloads. I was happy with that. Well, the next month, it like quadrupled, I guess, maybe. (laughs) It went from 345 downloads to almost 1,400 downloads. So, I was on cloud nine. Well, if I was on cloud nine in February, I'm on like cloud 50 or something like that for March. Uh, Y'all have done so awesome uh, of helping me spread the word about this. And I was 60 downloads shy of 3,000. So, it almost, it pretty well doubled uh, between February and March. And with only the first episode out this month, I'm already over eight, uh, over 700 downloads. So, guys, gals, thank y'all so very much for, for listening, for subscribing, for downloading uh, my podcast. And please can keep up the uh, keep up the good work of uh, spreading the word of my podcast. So, why don't we go ahead and get started on today's topic? Alright, like I said earlier, this week's episode is going to be on the National Traffic System. There's some additional information on the show notes for this episode that you might want to take a look at uh, if you, when you get a chance. The show notes can be found at everythinghamradio.com forward slash podcast forward slash 13. That's the number one three. Okay, so the, the official definition of the, of the NTS is a structure that allows for rapid movement of traffic from origin to destination and training amateur operators to handle written traffic and participate in directed nets. So basically it's a um, it's a, a training net and you pass traffic on it. That's what I gather from that, which it basically is. And the the NTS is used quite a bit, especially during uh, during disasters when communication lines are down or typical communication lines are down. So, if you look at the show notes and you look at some of the pictures that I have on there, you'll see how the NTS is uh, laid out, I guess you could say. Uh, Since you might not be able to get to a computer to look at the show notes, I'll explain it the best I can. So, the uh, National Traffic System, or the NTS, is broken up into like four, see, one, two, three, four, yeah, four different levels. Uh, actually, I'll tell you what, let me just walk you through basically what a, um, what a message could be handled like, if that makes sense to y'all. Kind of makes sense to me. I don't know, I've, it's been a very busy morning. I actually started this about four hours ago, and I'm just now getting back to it. Anyways, okay, so... I, let's say that I am in, uh, let's say, well, let's just say where I am. I'm in Texas, okay? And I'm at, actually in North Texas, in the section of North Texas. And I'm going to send a, um, a message through the national traffic system to my good buddy Kale over at Photime Podcast. So I would take my message and I would figure out what I'm going to say and write it down. I'm going to check into my local net here in Johnson County. And I'm going to pass that inf- that message on to uh, somebody who will, in turn, take it to the region, or the regional net. Uh, so I'm going to pass my traffic. Um, they're going to write down, verify that they copied it right, and they are going to check into the North Texas uh, regional traffic net. Uh, they're going to pass that information on to somebody else. Um, again, verifying that all the information is correct with the word count and everything. Uh, that person will in turn uh, check into the fifth region net and will pass my traffic on to somebody else. Again, verifying it's correct uh, and with the word count and all that good stuff. The person in the fifth region net will take that information, that message, and they'll check into the central area net. The central area net is the is one of the. Excuse me, my watch is going off for some reason here. 
the central area or the area nets are the one net that is a little bit different than everything else. Once the message reaches the area nets, there's only three of them. There is a Pacific, um, or a, yeah, Pacific area, there's a central area, and there's an eastern area nets. There's only three of them. And uh, there is a dedicated, there's dedicated operators uh, that work with the transcontinental corps to pass traffic between the areas. It's not normally, it's not done by just anybody. Um, they're assigned to do it. There's, you know, they do it all the time. Um, and normally it's done at a different time than when the actual area nets are done. So, anyways, my message now is in the central area net. They take the information, verifying it the entire way, and that operator with the transcontinental corpse, um, or the TCC for short, uh, will take it from the central area net and pass it on to the eastern area net. And from there, they'll go into the eastern area net, they'll pass it on to somebody in the fourth region uh, net. They will take that information and pass it to somebody in the South Carolina section net. And finally, they'll take that information and give it to uh, somebody locally. Um, they'll check into a local net where Kale is and pass it on to somebody there. Now, if Kale's there, he can take it directly. If he's not on the net um, and say if somebody else in the area has it and they know him, they can call him up on the phone and say, hey, I got this message from you or for you. Um, and this is what it this is what it says. This is who it's from. Or maybe they they're really good friends with them. They can just drive it over to him and drop it off at his house or something. <laughs> um, but anyways, that's the way that this, the, the whole process goes. It goes through uh, like one, two, three, four, eight different nets, possibly nine different nets before it it could potentially reach its goal. Now, let's say that that I'm in North Texas, and I'm sending to somebody in, um, let's say, Mississippi. Mississippi is in the same region as uh, Texas is, because the regions are laid out by call sign numbers. Um, all those that have the five in their call sign, that's one regional net. Normally, it's it's uh, num num numerical call sign region is where it's at. So, um, if it's at the same region, it'll only go up to the region and then come back down. If I'm sending something to, um, let's say I'm sending something to Kentucky, well, Kentucky is in the ninth region, so it's going to go all the way up to the central area and then go down to the ninth and down to Kentucky and then down to local so it's not going to go as far if the message doesn't need to go any further up the chain or further down the chain um, if it's you know basically gets off the highway the information highway at some point before the before the whole process is complete there before the road ends so to speak using the on-ramp off-ramp uh, example then it can it doesn't have to go all the way up to the central net air or the central area net it doesn't even have to go up to the regional net uh, if you if I'm trying to send a message to somebody in Dallas they're in the same thing they're both in North Texas so I can go to my local net my local net person will take it to the North Texas net and then somebody in the North Texas net will pass it on to um, somebody that can take it down to the local net of wherever the person is so Anyways, that's how the whole uh, regional or the whole um, NTS thing works. Now, there is another option other than just voice. Um, and it's kind of grown a little bit in the past, like, 15, 20 years or so, I think. Um, and that's digital. The digital, uh, like, packet, like, packet uh, BBSs. Um, 
you can go directly from your local uh, your local net or even your local house. You know, if you have a packet station in your house or something, and you connect to uh, the uh, another BBS in your area that forwards your message on to the, the traffic system, you can go basically local to area digital back to local and skip all the extra steps. So, digital has really cut down on the amount of traffic um, that is handled um, on the traffic nets, which in some ways are good, in some ways are bad. Um, I've actually heard how the some of the traffic nets, they might have just one message to pass, and something that used to be really, really, really popular um, because of email and cell phones and stuff like that has really died off. Now, if you take this this whole uh, NTS system and you throw it in during a natural disaster or a man-made disaster when there is no internet and there is no cell phones, then this is going to be your major your major uh, converse, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Your the major method of communication. I guess that's maybe what I'm trying to say. Um, and most time during natural disasters, the major um, type of communication is health and warfare, welfare. You may get somebody that has no uh, no way to communicate out. Um, you know, say like an earthquake hits Los Angeles, or back in 9/11, um, the NTS was was extremely busy. And they actually had to extend the times that they that they did the nets to, to handle the traffic. And most of the traffic that was on during uh, during like 9/11 or or an earthquake or whatever um, is health and welfare traffic, which is which is basically a um, you know kind of like somebody that lives in the area. Um, trying to get a message out to loved one somewhere else or loved one somewhere else trying to get a message into somebody that lives in the area. And because cell phones are down and internet's down and phone lines are down and everything's down because of this disaster, uh, it's hard to get communications in and out. And so they, you, you could use the tra- the national traffic system to do that. Uh, you know, I personally have never done that, but I have been party to it um, back uh, during 9/11, uh, back in 2001, um, a family friend of ours uh, had a, I believe it was a daughter, um, that worked in the World Trade Center, and of course, you know, they couldn't get in contact with her for a long time, and so they were over at my parents' house one Saturday evening on our game night that they used to do. Um, and they were talking about it, and they had you know telling how they hadn't been able to get in contact with her. So, my dad suggested that we use the national traffic system. So he wrote up a little uh, message and set it on. And about a week later, we actually got a response back saying that they were okay. So, you know, that's one of the things that I love about this hobby. You know, it, it's people helping people most of the time. You know, like ninety nine point five percent of the time, it's it's. You, you find amateurs that love to help other amateurs or other people or, you know, total strangers. So, I mean, that's, that's just plain awesome. Um, okay, let's move on a little bit. Let's talk about the actual message itself. Uh, the, me- the actual message itself um, is basically filled out and sent on a form called a radiogram. Now, a radiogram... Um, if you go to the show notes, you'll actually see a picture of it. The radiogram itself has basically like three different sections. And if y'all can hear my phone in the background, I am so sorry. My phone is just like blowing up. I'm, I'm actually going to um, going to, to turn off the ringer right now. So <laughs> maybe I'll do it sooner next time in the next episode because I really don't want to start recording this uh, segment again for like the fifth time. Anyways, the radiogram, the first section is like the receiving section, where the where the message originated from, um, who sent it, 
what the message number is, what the date is, stuff like that. It also has the the presidents, whether it's routine or health and welfare or emergency or whatever. The second seg uh, segment of the radiogram is who the message is to. You know, this is going to be the person that you're trying to get a hold of, the message, the person you're trying to send. In, in my earlier example, I would put uh, Kale's address, name and address and call sign there and phone number if I had it. Um, the third segment is the body, and it is the the message of the radio on the radio or all the message. Yeah. The message of the radio, <laughs> the message that you're trying to send, um, in the body you'll on the radiogram itself, you'll actually see 25, uh, lines in the body of the message and each block or each line is a different block. And that's where you put one word. You, you don't use spaces, um, you don't use like periods, um, and you can actually like mix and match letters and numbers. Um, so the rules are there is some like shortcuts you can use like Q codes and stuff like that too. Um, but anyways, it's a 25 up to a 25 word message uh, that you can send. And then at the bottom it tells you like. Uh, um, like who it's from, um, and then the very bottom is when it was received and when it was sent. Um, I actually have a full write-up, a full blog post on the national traffic system you can find, and you can actually find it in the show notes um, about uh, just under the, the actual radiogram section. Um, you can find a link to the post that I have, and I actually broke down each section and talked about each section individually. So I guess that brings us pretty much to the end of it. Um, and since we are talking about the national traffic system and radiograms, and if you'll remember a little earlier I said that traffic has really started to die off, um, one of the things that I heard about this when, um, when I was doing research for this is that um, it was actually requested by the organization, the national traffic system, the WRL, that different areas hold like um, message uh, message booths or something like that at different events uh, to try and get more messages and they even tried to make it where you had to ha in order to pass a message you had to have like two of them uh, before you could pass them for or something like that um, they were trying to push it where there was more things because um, it was believed that uh, you know if you know people weren't continuing to do it or continuing to use it, that the nets would kind of die off by themselves. And with the creation of the uh, digital part of it, the voice part of it has really slacked off. So this is what I'm going to do to help with this. <laughs> I'm going to issue a challenge to all of you, all of my listeners. And what I'm wanting is a message sent to me or a friend of yours but particularly preferably me um, in a radiogram over the national traffic system um, my information on QRZ and the UNLS is correct um, granted my phone number is not on there but my address is correct um, and if you can get it to uh, to my area um, I'll probably be on the net or somebody that's on the net will know how to get in contact with me. So, uh, my challenge to you is to send me a message. Send me a message over the national traffic system. Let's see how many messages I get. And each of these messages I will uh, read on one of my future podcast episodes. You know, one thing that I am asking um, is that you include the episode number in your radiogram somewhere. Um, do it like uh, ETH, that's Echo Tom Hotel, or Echo Tango Hotel 013. Um, include that in the message somewhere and uh, send it on. Remember, you only have 25 words total, um, and there is some rules and stuff like that that you need to, uh, to go by when you're filling out your 
message. So check out the show notes. Again, that's at everythinghamradio.com forward slash podcast forward slash 1313. Um, and under the radiogram section, there is a post link um, where you can find out some more information about how to fill out your radiogram. Alrighty, well, let's move on to the next section. We are at the 25-minute mark, so let's move on to our Amateur Radio Club Spotlight. Alright, so the Amateur Radio Club Spotlight for this episode is on the Emergency Amateur Radio Club. Um, and that is in uh, Honolulu, 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 Hawaii. We've made it up to the H's, folks, in our Amateur Radio Club Spotlight. If you haven't noticed by now, uh, I'm basically starting at the first letter. I basically started at A and have worked my way up um, in letters, in states, um, and we're on Hawaii this time. So, uh, again, it's on the Emergency Amateur Radio Club, uh, EARC. You can find their website at EARCHI.org. That's Echo Alpha Romeo Charlie Hotel India dot org. Uh, they have club meetings on the third Tuesday of each month, with the exception of June and December, at 7 p.m. at the Fleet Reserve Association Branch Number 46 um, in Honolulu. They have seven repeaters. They have four of them on two meters and three of them on 440. Um, part of them have, or a couple of them have PL tones, a couple of them other don't. So check out either your repeater directory or some other software or head on over to the show notes and get that information. Um, they have several nets, uh, both UHF, VHF, and HF. Um, they have, let's see, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20 different nets um, on different frequencies at different times of the week. That's a lot of nets. Um, so they, they seem like they're pretty active. Um, one other thing that I noticed about this club that really, um, really interested me and really kind of made me feel all warm and gooey inside. Um, no, seriously. Um, they have, they actually teach quite a few uh, technician and general classes. Um, There's like 10 or 12 of them that I saw that they taught last year, and they already taught like five of them this year. I mean, that is really awesome, and they're really um, a really good ambassador for the hobby with the way that they're teaching the classes. I wish that the interest was like that here, uh, you know, in order to, to get that kind of uh, classes. that That's just absolutely awesome. Um, and currently, um, one just started um, at the time of the release of this podcast, which will be on the 12th. Um, one had just started. Um, it started on Monday, April the 11th, so you can probably still get into the class. Um, head on over there to their website and um, contact somebody there and see if you can still get in. I'm probably betting that you probably can. Uh, I believe they run like four weeks, if I remember right. So if you want to get your license and you live in Honolulu, you know, head on over to their website. Again, that's E-A-R-C-H-I dot O-R-G. Emergency Amateur Radio Club, Hawaii, Hawaii dot org. <laughs> Alrighty, guys. Well, that brings me to the end of our Amateur Radio Club Spotlight. Um, if you would like your club featured on my podcast, send me an email to k5clm at everythinghamradio.com. Let me know your club name, your website address, and a little bit about your club. Um, I do ask that you have an up-to-date website because uh, most of the information that, that I get is from your website. Um, and I want to be able to tell my listeners to go to your website and get information that is not outdated, um, and that is, you know, um, accurate. So, um, if you want to be featured on there, give me a shout out. Um, I'm, you can also do it on Twitter. Uh, leave a comment below in the show notes. Send me an email, whatever. Um, but yeah, send me those 
If not, then maybe you'll just be lucky enough when I get to whatever uh, state you live in, um, and maybe I'll pick it. Maybe I already have. You know, I'm always looking, as I'm looking through all the different club websites that I find when I'm looking for, to, to showcase one, I always look at the links. That's like one of the first things that I do. And one of these days, I'm actually going to come across a club that has a link to my blog or to my podcast. And if I haven't done it on there on there already, I'm probably going to do it on you, on your club. If you have a link to my website when I get to, that's probably going to be the one that I, that I pick. Unless, you know, something, you know, you're haven't updated your website in years and the information that you have is outdated and all that good stuff. Other than that, I'll probably pick out your, your, your club to do a spotlight on. So, but anyways, guys, uh, again, thanks a bunch for listening to my podcast and checking out my blog. I really appreciate it. I really uh, appreciate everybody sharing the, the episodes and listening to my podcast. So I guess until next time, guys and gals, uh, 73, and I'll uh, see you next week. This is K5CLM, signing out. Hey everybody, once again I'd like to say thank you for listening to this episode of the Everything Ham Radio Podcast. If you like what you heard here, head on over to our website. There's lots of information there that I'm sure you're going to love. You can find it at everythinghamradio.com. While you're there, subscribe to get emails on when I publish a new post or a new podcast. You can click on the subscribe button at the top of the page or go there directly at everythinghamradio.com forward slash subscribe. Also, like me on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash everythinghamradio and follow me on Twitter at K5CLM. Also, I would greatly appreciate it if you would subscribe to this podcast, like it, share it with your friends, help me spread the word. So until next time, 73.